You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionFit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. Good afternoon and welcome to the Option Block. My name is Mike Tusaw, and if you're not hearing the person that you usually hear uh, hosting the show at this time, uh, you're not crazy because he is actually out on assignment today, Mr. Mark Longo. But we have an action-packed show for you today. Uh, we are excited about... Uh, a lot of things that are going on today. And uh, before I introduce my guest, I do have one important announcement. Never before in the history of the entire stock market has there ever been a better time to sell than right now. We had a very exciting day today. Uh, so with that uh, excitement that, w that the markets have brought to the table today, allow me to introduce my co-host, and I'm not gonna say partners in crime because uh, we're not criminals. Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi. Andrew, how are you today? Well, we're not criminals today, at least for sure. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. We're just mostly uh, trying to help our clients navigate these. Um, I can't call it a turbulent financial time. The only turbulence is on the upside. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let me sum it up for you. If you ain't long, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Let me sum it up that seems to be long, the. Uh, that seems to be the dominant theme. But I know we have to do a show. This is just the intro, so I'll, I'll wait for that till the good part. Of course, of course. So, with that, now that I've introduced all of my guests and cohorts uh, to the show, uh, let's talk about the markets today. Let's talk about how. Uh, uh, we actually, uh, over the weekend, we had a little bit of. Uh, now I don't know if you necessarily want to call it fear. But I know that uh, I personally made a lot of, uh, kept a lot of powder dry over the weekend uh, because I do think that if we have some type of macro government shutdown, that might be maybe just maybe some reason to uh, actually make the market go down. I mean, if nuclear war couldn't do it, uh, it's going to take quite a bit to do it, or I should say the threat of nuclear war hasn't been able to make this market go down, but uh, we have had volatility come into markets when we have had government shutdowns in recent years, so, all right, well, let's get some powder dry, but, uh, well, what do you know, I'm, uh, I still had ex some exposure to the markets, but uh, not quite as much as per usual, uh, but uh, what do you know, I'm buying more calls today, what can I do? <laughs> Andrew, what's, what's your thoughts on all this? Um, I think almost at this point, you need to be sort of long vol and long VIX. Just that this, I, we were just talking about it in the, uh, in the chat room, our chat room. And just uh, the market just has a, a curve to it. It's clearly a bull market. We've had, it's been a while since we've had just relentless bull markets like this, but uh, I've lived through them in the past. <laughs> they all look a lot alike. And um, it's just easier to buy. I think there's going to be a lot of premium, short premium strategy people that are going to have a difficult time <laughs> because you're going to spend a lot of time trying to roll and cover and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think long vol and, you know, long, long calls. Um, 
even after, I guess, uh, that we have a couple of votes to go through or the Senate caved or somebody. Who knows? I don't even know anymore. It's like, don't they have the other 365 days a year to actually pass legislation? That's kind of, like, What do they do for the rest of the year? I haven't quite figured it out yet. But anyway, uh, even with the threat of a shutdown, we and then, you know, we came in to the open with the shutdown, the market was about flat, and then all of a sudden, um, things were hunky dory, and they're sort of agreeing to kick it down another three weeks and negotiate, and we we just took off again. Um, and you know, earnings have been okay for the banks, but the big tech hasn't come out yet. I think Netflix is just reporting, but you know, I'm waiting for all the big tech earnings to come out to really, but we're. We're pricing them like they're going to be pretty fantastic, as far as I can tell. I don't know. What do you? How do you? How do you see all that in um, in technology land? You know, I'm just going to quote the Lego Movie. Everything is awesome. Um, <laughs> just you know, as we're looking at this for for technology land, or for technology as we go, uh, what's going to be interesting to see uh, the thing that I, I know this is going to shock you, but probably the earnings that I actually do pay some attention to uh, is the fruit company, Apple. And uh, that's not coming out for another week or so. Uh, curious to see what Netflix is going to do today. It's going to be something to where we'll, we'll look at as it moves. Uh, we'll say, wow, look at Netflix go with whatever it is, because it's going to be a large move, even whether it's uh, um, beats the straddle or does not beat the straddle. It will be something fun to watch. But uh, to me, the most serious of the tech names is Apple. Uh, that is kind of the uh, bellwether of all of it, so to speak. It is. Uh, it's kind of. It's getting to be kind of a big company. Uh, so that's the one that I'm kind of holding off for from the standpoint of earnings. Uh, now, here's the other thing that I found interesting today. Uh, the sector that is winning on the day, the sector that had the most movement of the day of all the SCLUs, uh, by SCLUs, I'm affectionately referring to the XL ETFs, XLE, XLF, XLI, and that type of thing, uh, is XLE, is energy. And energy, the energy stocks are actually up over 2% on the day as a sector. Uh, so that is one that I really found interesting uh, was the fact that XLE uh, was the one that was actually leading the charge today. Now, they were up with the market, uh, but even... Uh, at the at just the opening bell, uh, XLE was headed upward even before the vote came out. Uh, now, the other thing that I think is actually even more interesting with this, besides the fact that XLE is the leading sector in the marketplace today, is the fact that uh, we actually have some movement in the natural gas market. So I do think that a, a lot of the moves overall in the marketplace have to do with the Senate vote. Uh, we had a, we did have a broad-based rally, I would call this today. But uh, the one thing that I'm noticing that really I don't think a, is really making headlines today uh, or over the course of the last couple of weeks, so to speak, uh, would be that of natural gas. I'm looking at from the low natural gas had on... January 5th, and that gas was around 275, and right now it's trading up at 325. It's had quite the run recently. Uh, it's getting closer to the top of its range, and not that I really wanted to make this into a commodity show by any means. The, the Options Insider Network has plenty of other shows for that. Uh, there's Twifo, uh, and there's, there's other shows that cover that in more detail than this, but... Uh, Andrew, let me ask you this. It's kind of like a little curveball because, well, after all, it is my show today. <laughs> it's kind of a little curveball. Um, <laughs> what's your take? Are you looking at natural gas at all or any thoughts on that? Um, I, I look at it because I a, a while ago I bought just some private. Anyway, just I, I watch it every month and uh, I pretty much given up on it. Um, not one of the better investments I made. I. I didn't make it quite at the peak of the fracking boom. It was like maybe 2004, um, and then uh, and then uh, what happened? Oh, it, it, we had a peak in prices and everything was pretty hunky dory, uh, and then prices have just fallen apart in the fracking boom. So, uh, would I like it to go up? Yes, I think the story will be when they really can start exporting natural gas. Um, I'm not sure when that will be, but they're starting to. I know they were. They've been building export facilities, and there's there's a lot of looseness. 
or the some of the rules and things are loosening up there. So I I do watch it. Uh, you know, it was a long term investment, like a twenty year time horizon, mostly because they stopped production and they stopped. They just basically just they only kept the minimum production basically to pay costs and expenses and stuff. So the gas is still sitting in there, and I think it's probably not a dissimilar problem than a lot of natural gas wells and drillers. I have gone through. They put the drill. They put everything in, and they shut the production down just to pay costs and, you know, and pay the bills and stuff like that. But they're really, I think there's a there is a lot of production that can come back on. I think they're looking to export it, um, and, you know, if we start to see some of that, there could be a little bit of action again. Um, you know, UNG has made a a pretty decent move for that product. I mean, it just had a reverse split, you know, which is never great for anything. Um, if you're a VXX or UVXY watcher or something like that. But I mean, even even on those split basis, you still had a pretty good lift here, um, about 20%. So, you know, it's it's a weird winter. I mean, it's kind of wintry, but the uh, I don't know if we're having an abnormally cold winter for sure. So I, I look at this and say, no. Yeah. Um, I would I would love to see gas prices higher, but I don't see that happening until we really can start to export, you know, a, a really good chunk of the production because you know prices overseas are what a somewhere eight to ten dollars a BTU versus you know three and a half bucks here. So I do look at it. Uh, I like to see it go higher to crank some production up again, but I I don't I don't hold out hope for it. <laughs> Got it. Well, we have had close to to an 18 percent move over the course of the last couple of weeks. And in crude oil, uh, at least in the light sweet crude, we've had um, maybe a two dollar move. Not a lot. So it is something to keep an eye on. And if it goes higher over the course, of the next, if it continues to go a little bit higher over the next few days, uh, it is something that will definitely be on my radar. That is for sure. Now. Uh, a couple other things to ask about are to ask you about Andrew. Uh, we ha uh, I do see that Netflix appears to have announced its earnings. Uh, closed the day today or closed trading today at 227.58. Uh, we are around 245 right now. Uh, did any of your pit chatters have any positions in Netflix and uh, obey your your signals to buy lots of out of the money calls going into this? <laughs> I wish, you know what, I, I wasn't in the chat room today. I was just building the web, do mostly building the website. Um, I don't think we had a Netflix look, but this is still, um, I, I'm, I am still amazed by what people are paying for technology and for all these technology uh, companies. I mean, this is, this stock was what a hundred bucks after it split seven for one. Um, you know, not it wasn't very long ago, like a hundred and April, it was 130 bucks, and it's almost it looks like it's putting in a double from there. So, um, all I can say is it keeps going up and up and up, and um, and I think that's why the Qs were up one percent today, the SPX was almost up. A full, you know, up eight tenths of a percent. Um, the Dow would have been up more if GE was, you know, was actually <laughs> a better company at this point. So, I, yeah, I look at that and I go, oh, um, oh my word! But nothing is surprising me on the upside from technology. These guys have, I, you know, it's. I think the survivors of it's kind of like you know how, you know, the the looking at the like the uh, 19th century railroads, you know, and you had all those initial railroad companies kind of went bust. And then there was the survivors that became sort of titans at the time. Um, obviously, things move a little faster than they did back then. But you have kind of the same thing where you have, you know, these massive Internet infrastructure players like Google and now Amazon and I guess Netflix as a content creator. All there, they are just hooked into that. There's massive, massive customer and subscriber bases and they just keep growing and growing and growing and and as of right now I don't you know it's hard to it's hard to figure out when the top will be um, and you have the administration seems to be uh, more friendly to businesses growing like this um, at least if you just 
you have the runaway from highs on the stock market this year. They just keep running and running. So all I can say, like I said, the easiest trade for me is long VIX call spreads and long SPY, long Q, stuff like that. And you just sit and watch it because that's what we have. <laughs> There's that to me is a it is a it's a hedge trade and either something bad really derails the market or it just keeps going. So I mean we did have a shutdown today, right? Like government shutdown was like, oh for a whole hour. <laughs> yeah. What's funny is I think there was I learned like right like as a young trader, you know. The hardest thing is you're in the on the floor and then you know the market does all kinds of you know weird stuff. So like on Friday, all the news, the news is you know bad or the news wasn't great, they're not gonna be able to pull this off. So there's a lot of a lot of angst and stuff. And all the market players they feel that angst and they don't really want to go home with a position or um, it you get you you get that where you're since you're when the bell is open or the you know the market is running you you have a little bit of a tunnel vision and there's a you know the herd mentality just on a trading floor you could feel all those things happening and then the bell rings and then you have weekend and you have uh some time for uh let's just not call it clarity but um you know, the sun's still shining and, you know, life goes on and things don't look as bad. And so then when you come in, you have a little more perspective. Uh, I guess perspective is better than clarity, but either one of the two words. So you have today where, you know, as far as we can tell, they, this is how the government's working. And for a better word, the rest of the stuff that's coming out of there seems to be pretty bullish. So. People are like, okay, now let's have some earnings. And um, I, the funny thing is, is I didn't really even see the, the, the earnings bull catalyst this morning at all. Um, it was pretty. Um, it just, I guess, just the fact that they're dealing on this, um, that was enough because there was, there was some decent earnings last week, um, and the market really kind of hit that plateau and sort of stopped until the end of the week. And now I guess they're just they're letting the wild animal spirits run. And I let think it that's, run, baby. Let it might as well. <laughs> yeah. It is something. Final question before we get into the odd block. The VIX. Uh, you had mentioned the trades that you're doing in terms of uh, the call spreads. Uh, what are your thoughts on the VIX these days? I mean, we did have uh, it's kind of funny. The VIX is hot right now at 11, based upon what it's been recently. So I guess, what's going on in the VIX land in Andrew's world? Um, VIX land for us is, it's in one of those strange areas. Well it's, well, it's not strange. It's just the market keeps going up, and it's steady, and it kind of pulls the, it is pulling, I mean, the rallies are pretty vicious relative to the at the money, uh, at the money vol. So, it's hard for vol to go down in VIX when you don't really have, when the underlying volatility, even though we're going up, is still very high relative. So, you know, that a straddle gains in value whether the market is up 1% or down 1%. It's still, there's still that net gain in the premium. So that's kind of what's happening right now. It's hard for the that straddle to compress because you still have underlying movement, just in this case. Um, it's on the upside. In the in the QE era, we would have high vol, and then they would announce some QE thing, and then we would melt up on the upside. Um, but now what we're having is because vol is coming from a relatively low area. VIX, the way just VIX trades uh, on the SPX options, is those. it's hard for those contracts to get a lot cheaper than they are right now just because we're moving so much. Um, a liquidity provider doesn't want to sell, you know, a whole lot of 10% or 9% or 8% vol when we're rallying one, you know, one full, one full percentage point, which is more like a 16 VIX. So you get that, you get this, this effect where it's hard for VIX to go down unless we, I know it sounds weird, but unless we actually pull back a little bit or just sort of slow down equity prices. So that's what I'm saying. It's, there's a low penalty to owning VIX and VIX call spreads. 
and owning uh, queues. That stuff I talk about on my Vol newsletter will be out in February. But you know, Vol has a very specific way it trades when the market does certain things. So you want to try to set positions up that are going to benefit from the not the tendency of volatility and the tendency of how the SPX works. If you want to trade VIX or any of the other Vol products, so that right now is a strong tendency. So it sounds weird, but you could buy VIX call spreads and you could buy QQ, you know, like Qs or SPY. And it is possible for both sides of the trade to actually make money because um, VIX just is not going down very much or your hedge is going to cost you almost nothing uh, against, you know, what could be a pretty decent gain just riding your longs all the way up. So I, that is where we are as far as, uh, at least that's my take on vol right now. And, uh, you know, and until... The market starts to move in a different way. We'll get a different vol reaction out of everything. Sounds good. And speaking of reactions, there were some odd things that we need to react to. So let's move on to the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, and that funky tune that we've come to know and love lets us know that it is time for the odd block. Uh, this is where we discuss unusual activity and we are going to start off with P10. Uh, that was, that was a, uh, <laughs> uh, a, a fun uh, thing to say for the, for the, uh, based on the ticker symbol, but uh, we wanted to go through today. Uh, P10 is actually uh, Patterson uh, energy. Uh, they are down 24 cents to $24 and 24 cents. Uh, paper traded uh, 7,005 of the March 22 puts. It says March 16, but I'm guessing that means March of uh, 16th, uh, the date, uh, which would be uh, this coming March the, in the 18th, 2018 uh, for 70 cents and 5,193 of the March 26 calls for 60 cents. Uh, average daily volume is 840 contracts, and this is zero open interest. Uh, what's interesting is that the volume did go up in one block on the Amex, marked as spread, and priced, and and priced this was a short delta combination, possibly against existing stock. Uh, Andrew, what are your thoughts on this? Um, this looked like a because you were just talking about energy, so I thought that was funny. Uh, one of the one of the few stocks that were down today, <laughs> besides GE probably, is um, this combination. So it, the way it sets up uh, Patterson Energy, um, it, it's had a it's had a bit of a run like the rest of them, and it it just has a, the lows in August. What was it? A low like sixteen bucks or something like that. So it's had a bit of a run. It's kind of sitting there right now, uh, and kind of poking along. It just feels like this collar, this is more like a collar of a trade um, where they're not short as many calls. So they're not expecting a lot of upside, but it, it just, it feels like, you know, you just see a lot of these trades go up where they, they're buying puts that are out of the money. They're selling some calls. Um, and it looks like they're trying, they could be trying to collar some gains um, in the position or maybe trying to get through earnings. They do have an earnings coming up, so it it just has the the feel of that. But they bought the puts on the offer, they sold calls on the bid. So I'm just assuming that that's a they were looking for a, just a some sort of protective combination um, on the trade. But they right here, they're it's costing them a dime for the protection as of right now. Yeah, but they're not getting their juice for free, Andrew. That's got to be bothering you. It it bothers me a little bit um, <laughs> for this. For some of these kind of collars, but you never know what they have against it. So if they're if they're up, you know, eight or nine bucks on it, they they'll they'll give they'll give a dime away. So <laughs> that dime they, doesn't seem so bad. It doesn't seem that big in the big picture right now. Got it, got it. All right. Well, moving on, we're going to take a look at Hog Harley Davidson. 
Shares of hog are up 70 cents to $53.70 on the day. Uh, Hog is near the middle of its 52-week range. Uh, paper traded 5,000 of the February 50 puts at 72 cents and 2,500 of the February 52 half puts for a dollar 59. Uh, average daily volume is 4,240 contracts, and the open interest uh, on the puts respectively is 262 and 3,961. Uh, volume did go up in two blocks on uh, the Philex uh, marked spread. Uh, trade does look like it's getting long one and selling two into earnings initially. Uh, Andrew, what are some of your thoughts on Hog? You know, I, I'm wondering if uh, this one by two, again, not for credit. Uh, so you need something to happen for it to make money uh, based on where it's trading. So it's costing them about 15 cents. So they need some sort of downside action. Something below 50 would be great, uh, but not too far below 50. It's just, I think it looks like one of these little uh, around the earnings vol selling plays or just prior to earnings to see if they get a pullback. Um, and, you know, if they're actually going to get some kind of a pullback. Whoopsie, I think actually I think Harley earnings were a little. Let me check again. I want to make sure. Uh, yep. This, so this is a this is an earnings play, and they're looking for just uh, a little bit of a pullback in Harley, um, uh, just prior to uh, or just just through the earnings. So, you know, it's uh it is a play. Uh, there might be a few other. There was a lot of put sales in Harley also uh, on multiple strikes today. So we'll see how long that all. I'll last, but as it stands, it just looks like a little vol selling play. Uh, and to try to really capture Harley around 50 bucks or 50 would be the optimum spot, but um, it doesn't, it doesn't look tremendously bullish. That's for sure. It's only, let's call it sort of bullish, <laughs> but not too much. Got it. You know, I like the, you know, I don't follow Harley at all, so I don't have any opinion on this trade in particular, but the strategy is one that I really find fascinating in that what you can do with this is that the strategy of the old wheel strategy that we talked about on the show uh, to where you sell a put if you want to get into a stock. Uh, this is kind of a way of doing a, uh, a wheel on steroids in to some extent, depending on what way you view it, or uh, a wheel for chickens, depending what way you do it is wh whatever way you want to look at it. So the way with which it would be a wheel trade on steroids would be if you're right at 50, uh, you will have the 50 puts expire worthless, uh, but you'll also have the benefit of the uh, 52 half put working in your favor. And so if you're really... Uh, I'm not sure what the word would be, neutral, I guess. I mean, if you really believe that this one is going to be uh, right at 50, then the benefit of this trade is that you're getting the 52 half puts for not quite for free, but pretty darn close. Uh, I'm sure there was someone like Andrew in the, uh, the, the risk room saying, oh, good gosh, how come you have to pay a small debit for this trade? Uh, but with that being said, uh, it's a way with which you can uh, do this and get a little bit more benefit should it be right at 50. Now, the way that you could view this as a wheel trade for chickens is that if you didn't want to just uh, sell the 50 put because you're concerned that it might be at 48 or 47 or something along those lines, uh, then what this trade could do is benefit you because you'd have the uh, 52 half puts working in your favor as well. So it depends on which way you look at it. Uh, if you really think it's going to be at 50, then this would benefit you more than a just selling a 50 put. Or if you're concerned with it going to maybe 48 or 47, uh, then this would be another way with which you can kind of protect yourself against your own Protect yourself against yourself, I would say, in that you're too <laughs> concerned with it. So uh, I've done this trade many times, and I, I think it's a good a good way of getting into a stock if you have either of those two sentiments that I describe personally. So I really like it. Moving onward, let's talk about Healthcare Inc., HCA. 
Uh, shares are down 37 cents today to $92.64. Uh, paper traded 5,000 of the March 8590 put spreads. Uh, the ADV for for these is 20. I'm sorry, 2,556 contracts. Open interest is 5,409 and 95 contact tracks, respectively. Uh, volume went up in two blocks on the ARCA marked as a spread. Now, this could be a house money roll where the trader is tr taking profits. Uh, I really enjoy house money rolls when I'm on the winning side of them. Um, how about you, Andrew? <laughs> um, I, I like them myself. I, I, I think they're quite fantastic. Um, one thing I said, I always feel like I'm pressing my luck a little bit, you know, because I, yeah. I, I, the more I do them, I'm like, oh, you know, this is good. And I'm rolling my money up. But then, then if I if I don't get the kind of continuation, I get that sort of I get a little bit of roller's remorse where I'm like, oh, hey, well, remorse. I, I don't I like to make sure things keep kind of going in that direction. So sometimes with options, I try at least on a shorter term basis not to press my luck too much after I've already been correct, I think. Uh, but uh, this person, I think, and I'm only going with the house money roll because of the way the trade looked. Um, there was a lot of open interest on the 85, so I figure they were closing that position and rolling up. The only, the hard part is, is which way did they start? Um, HCA has had a bit of a move like everything else. I mean, it was a $75 stock in November. Now it's a $92 stock. So as with much of the market, it has sort of leapt off the table. <laughs> so, uh, uh, clearly maybe off the operating table. Um, and and flown, um, boy, that was pretty weak. I have to say that was pretty weak. Anyway, <laughs> and so I'm, you know, the thing with it is, I mean, are they rolling up a protective put in the same term? It, it, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You have your 85 put, now you're going to spend another buck to roll it up to the 90. So I'm, I'm thinking this could be just a short put trade and they want a little more money out of it. So that's, that's sort of how I priced it. See, at 105 on the spread. So let me see what this, how this went up. See, yeah, I, I think they were. Well, I could. It very well could be a protective put roll up. So it's just a. I have to say, it's it feels like kind of a strange roll, but it. I think it's still a close and reopen roll. I'm just. I'm not quite sure then on the price how it was priced, which side. If it's a good house money roll or it's a bad house money roll, depending on what they have against it. Got it, got it. Well, that concludes all of these oddities for today. And for today, let's actually do, uh, normally we do this on Thursday, but uh, by popular demand, we're going to work into a strategy block today. So um, I am going to let the music play here, and I am all excited to tell you about what's going on in the strategy. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for The Strategy Block. You know, I have the option club that I talked about of what we're, we've started here in St. Charles. Uh, we're up to 38 members strong now, so this is uh, quite a bit of uh, popularity that's been happening uh, just in, in recent times when doing this, of just sending out one thing on social media. So uh, excited to see what we have at our next meeting. But I remember at our last meeting, one thing that I was saying, uh, we always talk about uh, what works, what doesn't work, or what has been working for you, what do hasn't been working from you, just to kind of just get to know the traders a little bit and uh, see if we can share ideas ideas. And so I just said to everybody right before it was my turn to talk, I'm like, I'm kind of embarrassed with what I'm going to say in terms of what's working. And uh, they're like, oh, no, you're fine, whatever, whatever. Uh, and so I said, guys, I've been buying out of the money calls these last few months. And so it, it's hard for me to even say, but I continue to buy out of the money calls. So I want to go through what I did today with my trades. Uh, going into the weekend, I should say at the beginning of last week, after buying the 275 call in SPY as an out of the money call, uh, it was obviously in the money, 
but go and I had I had already sold a 285 call against it just to kind of get some premium for it. And towards the end of the or towards the middle of the week last week, uh, I was kind of concerned with uh, number one the fact that we had a lot of profit in the 275 call, and the fact that there's a lot of talk of government shutdown. Uh, so there's an old adage in trading, never let a winning trade turn into a losing trade. And this one was a, a pretty nice trade. Uh, everyone knows me on this show. I'll talk to you, tell you about the times that I get my butt kicked. But uh, this is one that we were able to score one up for the good guys. So I sold, I rolled down the 285 call to the 280 call to where we had we were net positive delta, uh, 15 deltas per contract. And that's what I felt comfortable with going into the weekend. Uh, my thought was is that if the market were to go higher, volatility were, would be able to come down if I wanted to roll it up higher. And it wouldn't hit hurt me so bad should that have happened. Now, um, with markets coming up like they did today, uh, what I just decided to do was do a rinse and repeat. I got out of the 285, 275, 280 call spread, and I'm starting over right now. I went out to April and I bought a 295 call uh, for 89 cents. And the reason that I did that is because of the fact that these last three weeks have been very good if you're a call buyer, as any anyone who's ever traded an option could probably figure out. And so I am a little bit concerned with this market being a little bit top heavy right now, but good gosh, I'm not going to stand in the way of this. If the bulls are going to keep running, I'm staying on board with this and I'm going to run with them. So my rationale for right now is that I still have roughly 15 long deltas. Uh, and within this allocation to give everybody an idea of how much money I allow for it per contract, uh, it's roughly $1,500 per contract. And so of that $1,500, I have roughly 89 cents at risk right now, or based on what we paid for the contract today when we did the roll. Uh, I did it towards the end of the day. And with that being said, for the my strategy right now, it's kind of the same as it's been for the last few months. We're going to have a pullback at some point, but in the meantime, I still want to be a part of this market. And I think that... One of the wise ways of doing it, at least for me personally and for my clients who are in this strategy, is to buy out of the money calls. It pains me to say this right now, but I'm saying it because of the fact that the market's going to go up, down, or sideways. And if the market goes down and all I have on the table is this out of the money call, well, do the math. Even if this were to go to zero, uh, then I'm out $89. Uh, when $1,500 is what's allocated to it. Uh, that's something with which we can recover from. And uh, with that, let's say the market goes higher. Well, obviously, you'll benefit from the out-of-the-money call. But now the key question that comes along with being an out-of-the-money call buyer is what if it stays the same or doesn't move enough for you to make any profit? Well, here's what you have to do on this, and here's what I, I've been doing over the course of the last few months. I've been doing stuff. Uh Let's say we do have a little bit of a dip tomorrow and we're down 3 or $4 in SPY, 1% uh, drop. That seems like such a weird, odd thing to say, a 1% drop, uh, and we're down $3. That's kind of weird. If we have a, We've had 2% drops in the market in years past, but in order for that to happen, we'd have to have almost a 60-point, nearly a 60-point downturn in the SPX. Uh, kind of weird when you think about it. But my point is, is that if we have something like that happen, then implied volatility would likely go higher and I'd be able to sell some type of premium, uh, whether it's a put spread, whether it's a put, whatever the case may be, uh, I'd have that ability to do stuff. And so what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to finance that 89 cents. And I, I went out to April, so I have, I believe, 88 days till expiration. I'm trying to finance that 88 cents or 89 cents, I should say. And in the meantime, if I don't do it, uh, yeah, I have the risk of being chopped out, uh, but that's why it's important to have good risk management in place when doing spreads or trying to do stuff. Uh, but overall, what I really believe is still there right now. If you are a bull like I am and you're concerned with a pullback like I am, like I always am, 
I really like out of the money calls right now, assuming you're managing the risk properly. Uh, we're at a time that we have very low volatility and the market continues to go higher. So by just doing basic strategy 101, I'm really a fan of the out of the money call at this point and uh, trying to do stuff to finance it. So that is an update on the strategy that is going on in the world of Uncle Mike and his clients. Uh, and let's now see what you have to say. Let's go to the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right. Now, let's talk about that crazy thing that uh, we haven't talked about in a little while. Uh, that would be Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin futures are actually trading right now. Uh uh, they're actually below the $10,000 level. Uh, so that is something that's, uh, um, I don't know if I can necessarily say it's a surprise by any means, but uh, with Bitcoin, when they opened up a few weeks ago, or about a month ago now, actually, or a little over a month ago, uh, when Bitcoin opened up, uh, they it was at roughly uh, 15000 uh, Now it's actually, it's gone up and it's gone down, but uh, now we see it around the 10000 mark or just below it, actually. Um, it's something to talk about. Uh, I, as anyone's heard, I've not been a bull on them, but I have not had the means or the desire for that matter to short them. Uh, so well, I guess I suppose I had the means, but didn't really have the desire. Um, but with that being said, uh, I have wanted to buy some vertical put spreads on them, but they just have not been there for me. So poll that we asked the audience, if options did exist on Bitcoin, how would you trade them? Assuming one month till expiration. Uh, four choices that we have are actually buy 5% out of the money calls, buy a 5% out of the money put, sell a 5% out of the money covered call, or just short the futures. Uh, Andrew, what would your answer be on that? And what do you think the audience did, assuming you did not look at the show notes? And if you did look at the show notes, just tell me what you would have said. And we'll just have to take your word for it. Well, I, I did look at the show notes. Just oh, you now. cheater. I, but it wouldn't I'd say anything I said last week. Just buy some out of the money puts. And I and I and I what I am surprised about is how close the number two answer is to that. Buying some out of the money calls. Yes, there. I mean, there's people are now. Here's the thing that is a little selling the five percent out of the money covered call. Uh, now, as you know, um, shorting the future definitely has a lot of risk in there. But selling the five percent out of the money cover call that could turn into quite a messy. That could be a mess. That almost sounds like the opposite of what you want to do, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> well, here's what's interesting about it, though. Sometimes you see, like, uh, on a pharmaceutical stock, you'll see premium to where the straddle is almost the the, the size of the price of the stock itself because there's going to be some um, FDA uh, announcement or something along those lines. So I don't know if I would necessarily – I wouldn't do it, but I don't know if I would necessarily poo-poo it that quickly in terms of a covered call – if the premium is like pharmaceutical uh, right before a, a drug announcement premium on it. So you don't know what it is, but I wouldn't quite poo-poo this um, as of yet. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Because premium on Bitcoin would have to be in the stratosphere, I would think. Yeah, it'll, I mean, it'll be, what, 70, 80, 90 percent on a $10,000 number. So, <laughs> so. So if you think about it right now, just for reference, the Dow is a $26,000 number, and Bitcoin wasn't very far away from there um, not very long ago. So, Or the SPX is 2800 and the at-the-money straddle is a 9 vol, and we're talking about a $10,000 number on a 70 or 80 vol. <laughs> so... Um, it's going to be many factors of that higher. Uh, so that the money straddle could be, uh, what is that, 20, 
uh, $2,000. So that the F-20 straddle might be for a month out, might be 4,000 bucks or something like that on a $10,000, um, or 3,000 bucks on a $10,000 underlying. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be a pretty big chunk of change, uh, Attaboy. when you get to it. But when volatility is that high, uh, it's that high for a reason. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Got it. All right. So the results were from this poll, 32% first place buying the out of the money put second place, 27%, 5% buying the out of the money call uh, third place, just short the futures at 25% and then fourth place uh, at 16% sell a 5% out of the money covered call. All right. We have a quick question from Charlie C. What is, and I actually would love to hear this one from Andrew. What is the weirdest thing that you have ever seen in the options market? Wow. So there's some there. Well, it's there's there's weird as far as option geek weird goes, meaning clients trying to do tricky things um, to fool market makers. So there's been things like they ask for market, but they want a one day settlement of the options instead of a three day settlement. And that way, uh, because they would settle quicker, they could avoid uh, paying a dividend and we're supposed to be stupid and might go, oh, okay, sure. We'll just let you have skate on the dividend instead of it settling and being called away. Um, so there are those types of trades uh, where people quote things uh, and they try to trip you up. So I saw that. Um, Personally, the strangest one that wasn't even strange, but it was a little bit weird, was um, getting a sign on out of the money puts, and then the stock opened at that way below that level on a following Monday. So that was kind of an ouchy one. Um, so you get a signed on the stock's trading 17, a signed on 12 puts, it opens seven, goes to four. So that one was that one was ugly. Um, as far as that was definitely a weird one. Um, I've seen a lot of exploding options where people have sold options for, uh, I guess, what you say nickels now, but in those days they were teenies and eights and go to like five or eight bucks in a day. Um, so those are, I've seen some very, very, very large moves, um, which is why I tell a lot of my clients, you know, you should close your short contracts. If you've made money on them, you should close them because statistically, you know, are they going to blow up in your face? Most likely not. Uh, but when they, if they do, you're going to be miserable. So it's one of those things where that's why there's skew in the market. Um, it's, it's probably improbable that it blows up, but you're going to be so unhappy with yourself that it, it does. It's better just to Still keep the profitable trade, close it, and take it off your book and off your books, and then go on to do the next thing. So, uh, those are the strange things that that I can. But the really overall, just constantly uh, as a liquidity mo you know market maker, people quoting stuff and trying to just trip you up like you don't know, you know how options trade. A like a lot of stuff was quoted where just endless, 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 lots of quoting where. And that was one of the functions that the floor provided was just uh, guys upstairs always trying to, you know, try to price something or figure something out. And um, uh, that was that. As far as uh, the weirdest thing in the options market, now I've seen weird things on the trading floor, <laughs> but I don't know. If that, that I don't qualifies. know if this is family tell. This is a family show here. I don't know if that's appropriate for this. <laughs> so. Maybe I'll just save those for another episode of the weird block. <laughs> of course, of course. All right. Uh, we have time for one more question uh, from Market. Uh, what is the truth about all the talk about VIX being moved using SPX puts? Is this a thing? Could you please discuss? And Andrew, this is kind of in your world, so I am going to let you have pride of place. Uh, well, VIX is made up of um, all options that have a bid over a certain period of time. So the, from, I think, we, uh, from day 23 to day 37 now in the weeklies. So it's kind of that sliding scale, and it's going to grab 
the option prices from there. So if you do get, you know, where the vol starts to go up or all of a sudden you get a bid for all of this downside junk, um, all of that will translate into the VIX calculation. So can it be manipulated a lot? Um, I think not without, you know, the VIX market reg trying to figure out why it happened because everybody's quotes are recorded. So it would have to be pretty subtle uh, in order to do that. Um, but I have seen some pretty low prints and some pretty high prints, you know, probably, but relative like one to one and a half points in VIX, where it was surprising. I think we had an 875 low. I think it was in November. It was a really, really low print for VIX. So I, I think there is, it can, it can move the options. When VIX is really low, it tends to be a little more sensitive um, to which, you know, to somebody kind of bidding the puts up a little bit. So all of a sudden stuff that didn't have much of a bid gains a little bid. And then all of these options now have a little bit more of a bid. So that could push the value up a little bit, but um, because it would be the best bid and that would lift VIX. It would lift the average enough. So how they uh, how they grab that information. So it is possible, but with all the quotes being recorded, it's I would say you'd have to be pretty darn good at it <laughs> to get it to slide under the radar. Got it. All right. And speaking of sliding under the radar, we are almost done with this show. So with that, let's proceed to Around the Block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right. Around the Block. Andrew, what the heck's going on? What do you want? You just going to watch the market go up? Or, I mean, uh, what are you guys looking at over there at the option pit right now? I think just the stuff that's not dissimilar from what you're looking at. I've liked long-term vol for a while, although the tech vol has gotten a lot more expensive than it was. Um, buying out-of-the-money options. Um, uh, I like long VIX and long just about any index call. Uh, that's pricing pretty well here for the next month, especially through the next round of earnings. Um, so those are the two biggest. Um, the vol product stuff, unless something happens, is not super as interesting right now as far as them moving a lot. Um, but uh, I think just it's good old-fashioned vanilla index, index options and equity options that are just taken off like crazy. So... Markets, options, lovable market. So it's going to be a tough market to sell premium in if, we, if you get more of the same here. Agreed, agreed. And yeah, for the rest of this week, tomorrow we have Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Travelers, Verizon. Wednesday we have GE, uh, United Technology. And then Thursday we have 3M, Caterpillar, and Intel. So with that being said, Andrew, what can our listeners uh, learn from you right now at the option pit? What do you guys got going on over there? Uh, we just did our VIX made easy, which has been our biggest single, uh, like off the rack seller in our store. So basically teaching people how VIX works, how the futures work, how you trade it, how to use it. Um, so that has been great. And I'm probably going to do another one like VXX or UVXY made easy. Uh, that series will probably be coming out maybe in a month or so because uh, people like it. Uh, and I'm writing an, our just volatility newsletter um, that will be out the 1st of February. So we finally everything's kind of in place to put that out. But only vol trades, only when I see really good edge to do them. And generally it'll be kind of paired off. So there'll be what I would say is like market delta will be mostly neutral. Uh, and there'll be just direct vol trades. So uh, so if you want to learn how to trade volatility, that will probably be the easiest, best way to do it, in my well, opinion, of course. Well, Andrew, I have an even easier way to do it. Uh, it's the RCM VIX Made Easier series that we're putting out. And the way that we're making it easier is we're actually giving you a $100 credit towards the option pit if you open up an account through RCM. And for a new client, uh, now with that, um, 
for a lot of people. Uh, the ticket charge is something that's a thorn in the side when they want to do a roll of an option or something along those lines. Uh, at RCM, we've been able to negotiate a very beneficial commission rate with major brokers at 35 cents per contract without a ticket charge. Uh, so if you would like to trade through our firm, uh, through one of our brokers with whom we work with, who are nationally known, and I guarantee you've heard, I'd be shocked if you hadn't heard of them. If you want to give me a call, uh, give me a call. Uh, of course, we do charge a small fee for it, but most of the time it is uh, inconsequ or it's very uh, anemic in comparison to what you're actually paying annually in the ticket charges. So feel free to give me a call and talk about that, or if you'd like to work with a financial advisor who is not afraid of the word VIX, uh, and who by no understands it's not easy, but is happy to work with you, uh, feel free to give me a call as well. Uh, my number is 312-212-3531, or shoot me an email at mtosaw at rcmfs.com. So with that being said, I would like to thank Andrew for co-hosting with me today, and uh, I would say get well soon to Mark Longo, but uh, he's doing pretty well on his assignment, as I have air quotes going up with my fingers that you cannot see. Anyway, folks, thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure that you download the Options Insider app on your phone. It is an excellent app. I use it myself. Uh, and if you're not uh, into doing that, make sure you check out the website for all of the other fun ways with which you can uh, listen to all of the quality, awesome programming uh, that is on the Options Insider. Folks, I'd like to thank everyone for coming and wish everybody well. Have a great day. So long. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 